Alright guys, today I got a 2004 Grand Marquis that has an AC concern, but they didn't know it. What they brought it in for was a coolant leak, they thought, and it ended up being the AC accumulator, and it's a common failure on these for sure. Whether it be a Crown Vic, Grand Marquis, or Town Car, the whole engine compartment here, and all the failure points on the engine, AC system, and uh, cooling system are all the same. So this video applies to a lot of models and it's going to help a lot of people um, go after the right component the first time without searching all over for a reason why their AC system is not working. Now for a while there, there was a problem with the actual fans on these, the electric fans, not coming on and that's definitely needed when you have the AC running. Anytime the AC is running and you're requesting it to run, that fan should at least be on low. So that's another thing to check. But we're going to concentrate on the AC accumulator and we're going to take it out today and change it out. And I'm going to show you just how it fails and why they thought it was a coolant leak. The AC accumulator is very easy to get to. It's right behind the reservoir here for the coolant by the fan. And it's right straight down there. And you can see on here, there's foam wrapped around it, and that's for insulation. But what the AC accumulator does is it sweats on the outside and then gets a bunch of dirt and everything else caught down in there. And that tank on there is steel, so between the moisture and the trapping of the dirt, the, uh, the tank actually rots out on there because everything gets trapped in there. And you'll never see it up top here, but you always see it down below. It's a good place to check. So if you're doing a quick visual around your engine compartment and you look at it, you don't see no oil or, or dye or otherwise, you need to really look below. Alright, so we come down below here and we could definitely see in the bottom side of the accumulator that there is a leak. Now these will get wet, the whole foam ring there will get wet with uh, water and don't count that as a leak. What you got to look for is that actual green dye from the uh, AC system that's coming out with the oil and that's where your refrigerant leak is at that's why we need to change it out if we keep uh, putting more refrigerant in there just gonna keep coming out keep coming out and this leak you can see if there's that much oil that means it's leaking a lot of refrigerant also so we're gonna so a regular stop leak is not really gonna be able to seal that up either now most of these actually go so long that there's no refrigerant left in the system to evacuate but in the end we're gonna have to at least do a vacuum on the system to get any air out of there for sure before we ever try to charge the system. Uh, the ports on here, right here is the high side and then back there is very easy to get to also is the low side and that's the charging port right there. Now in this particular car there's a lot of refrigerant left in here so we're going to do an actual evac and uh, vacuum on it so that it boils off all the refrigerant and the oil also and get it all sucked out of there so it's safe to pull those lines off of there. Okay, now we have zero pressure in the system, we can start pulling the connections off of there. We're going to get the electrical connector off of there, put it to the side, just a little tab on here. Pop it off to the side. And then there's these retainers right here, just hold the two lines together as a safety. We can pull those off. And there's one over here too, should be able to see that. Pull that off. Now before I actually pull these connectors off, these hoses, I like to spray the back side of the connection there, the spring retainers on there with compressed air to get any kind of dirt out of there make it a lot easier to uh, expand the spring on there and get them out. And the tool to get them off is a regular fuel line quick connect like this. You can get them from Lyle and they sell this basic kit at just about every auto parts store Harbor Freight, uh, Blaine's Farm and Fleet in order to release them you just put the quick release on there like this and they push it up into there and it will spread out the garter spring in there and you may have to wiggle it around a little bit and definitely move your line around a little bit while you're pulling on it so I like to pull up on the fitting to get it in there all the way and release the garter spring and then take my hand and grip the line and twist it out too. And it'll come out and you see there's 
three O-rings on there, so it takes a little bit to get it out of there, plus a big heavy line. But they will come out. Just keep moving that release tool around so it fully releases that garter spring, and after that it should come off uh, fairly easy. And then I get the line out of the way so we don't ruin the O-rings on it. And then you just do the same thing to this line. Now after that comes the easy part. You have uh, three 13 millimeter bolts that actually hold it on. There's an ear here. And on the other side, you can kind of see it right here. And then one down below, you'll be able to see it. Uh, right next to where we, we saw that leak earlier. few things to note on this new accumulator before putting it in is to make sure yours has these actual caps on it. Inside of there should be a vacuum put on the system from the factory and these caps should be, still be present and when we pull them off there should be a hiss sound from the vacuum. Um, also the old AC cycling switch is not compatible with the new one uh, if you're going from the straight up and down one, the vertical one, to the horizontal version. And that happened in 03. Now, the most important thing is that the new accumulators and the new uh, sensors, the switch, the cycling switches, they never ever come with the O-ring. You must transfer it over. Most of the time these are A-OK -okay to transfer over as long as you're careful. Otherwise, if you want to deal with it, you better order a new one when you order a new accumulator. Okay, we got our O-ring transferred without damage and oiled it up a little bit for that sensor. We're going to screw in the sensor later so we don't break it off of there. The actual switch, I keep calling it a sensor. We'll screw that on later so it doesn't break off. Now I can pull these caps off of here and it should make a sound. Now you're supposed to drain the old one by drilling a hole in the bottom of it and see what you collect out of it as far as oil. But I've always been comfortable with three ounces of oil but make sure you put it in the inlet side and not the output side because there's an actual reservoir of oil in here and uh, separate it before it comes out. And then just lube your O-rings on your fittings here, your hoses, with some pag oil. And then they'll slide right in. And slide them all the way in and wiggle them until you hear a click. And now you can see it's, it won't come off of there. Don't forget your uh, clamps on here, your safety catch. Now before I put this last line on here that goes into here, I put the cycling switch on and make sure your O-ring's on here and lubricated. It's very important. And the reason I put it on here now is when we're finagling it down in here, this thing can crack off here very easy. It's all plastic, so uh, we're less of a chance to damage it um, putting on now. And you can tighten it on by hand. You should be able to all the way down at the bottom. And then I just snug it up a little bit. Uh, with 11 16 wrench quarter turnabout it's more than enough you'll feel it and then make sure you plug your connector back in and then the last thing we gotta do is put this last line on here and the same thing give it a little twist and push until you hear that click like that and you give it a good tug and it should not come off or even really move. Uh, it's a pretty solid connection with this size line. At this point we're sealed up. All our fittings and connections are on here on all ends. Our switches and connectors are on here and we're all bolted in. We need to pull a vacuum on the system, the AC system, for at least 15 minutes. I prefer to go to 45 minutes to boil off any kind of moisture in the lines in the system. Alright, so we're going to put it into a vacuum. Let it do its thing. And I'll suck it down to about 28 or 30 uh, inches of vacuum there. And just let it go once it achieves that and for like I said about 45 minutes. Now I know many of you do not have this kind of system to suck it down for you, but Harbor Freight sells uh, vacuum pumps for AC systems and the manifold gauges and they even have a foot operated uh, vacuum pump for the AC system to suck it down so there are options out there all the information you need for your AC systems right here in your AC label has your refrigerant charge capacity the type and of course the oil capacity 
which we already filled. But so the one you're looking at right now is the charge level. And it's 38 ounces for this particular vehicle, and that's what you need to know so you get the right size cans to mount up to it to uh, recharge it. Once you get done charging your AC system, just look at the low side pressure and make sure it's right around 25 to 35 range, and it'll keep cycling on and off as it goes. It should look something like this in a fully warmed up engine. And that's about it. Hope this helps.